My name is Mary Bonato. I am an attorney at Gay and Lesbian Advocates and Defenders, which is based in Boston, but I am up here in Maine. Uh, and I want to thank you all for joining the webinar today, hosted by GLAAD and co-sponsored by Equality Maine and the Maine Women's Lobby. I also want to thank Bernstein Shore for making the technology available to do this. And I also want to thank all of you who worked on passing question one to make this totally joyful day that is soon coming possible. So here's what we're doing today. I am joined by Betsy Smith of Equality Maine, David Farmer, who wears many hats, but most recently communications director for Mainers United for Marriage, and Alice Neal, an attorney in Portland at West End Legal. Her practice includes advising same-sex couples, including with respect to dissolutions. So that's who you're going to hear from, and I am going to start. And I want to say this is obviously a fantastic time because finally uh, same-sex couples, many committed for decades, are going to finally have the opportunity to make that commitment in marriage. Uh, at the same time, there's a legal organization sponsoring this because there is a legal dimension to marriage, and it starts with a government marriage license, and it creates legal obligations and responsibilities uh, for the spouses and also provides a wide web of protections uh, in virtually every area of life and death. So what we're going to do today is talk about some logistics and how to get married. What if you're already married? Betsy's going to give an update about what's happening on the 29th. Uh, David Farmer is going to talk about a few key points on religious freedom. I'm going to go back and address some questions that have already come in to all of us about what all of this means. And then Alice is going to end with a few points about uh, divorce. So just to start, you know, the first question, of course, is uh, how do you get a marriage license? And before I say anything more, let me just remind everyone, if you have a question, you can... If you have a question, you can, um, I guess, go to the right side of your screen and type in a question, and the questions will be screened, and I will say to you that we will do everything possible to make sure that ultimately all the questions get answered, even if we can't do them all today. But how do you get a marriage license? If you're a Maine resident, uh, what you do is you go to the clerk in the town where at least one of you resides. You know, I encourage you to check the hours in advance, and you fill out an application, which is called an intention form. And the information on that form is pretty basic, you know. What is your name, your parents' name, your date of birth, uh, your age? You know, marriage is for people 18 and over. There are some possibilities for younger people marrying, which is why they want to know your age. Uh, create some additional hurdles. Uh, and do you have a previous marriage? And if you do, was it ended by death, divorce, or annulment? And where? What court? When? And this just uh, suggests right away that in Maine we don't uh, allow people to renew their vows formally. If you have a marriage, you don't need to remarry. And, of course, with our new law, there are a number of us, and I'm included in this, uh, who will be married on the 29th uh, by operation of question one, because there is a provision in question one that sa says, or in the law that was created by question one, that says uh, marriages will be recognized if they were licensed elsewhere. Uh, the, the form also contains a piece about whether or not you are in a main uh, domestic partnership. If you are, it's fine. It's just that it will be terminated automatically upon marriage. So, as I've already said, if you're already married uh, legally from another state, you will be married in Maine as of December 29. Uh, a lot of questions have come in from people, understandably, about well, what happens if I am in a civil union or a registered domestic partnership from another state? Can I marry in Maine? So here's the situation. If you are in one of those legal statuses from Vermont or California, whatever it might be, uh, and you're seeking to marry the same person, that's fine, you may do so, because neither a civil union nor a registered domestic partnership is a marriage. At the same time, they're a legal status. So if you are in one of those relationships with someone else, they need to be dissolved before you can marry someone in the state of Maine. So again, just to summarize on that, if you 
seek to marry somebody, the same person you're already in a legal status with, that's fine. But if you have a legal status with someone else, you do need to dissolve that before you may marry in the state of Maine. And GLAD can provide attorney refer referrals for how to do so. We have done some of that work ourselves and figured out a way to do so. Um, okay, so you know who you're going to marry. You're allowed to marry. How do you do it? Who can solemnize and so on? I will say that the the marriage the marriage has to be mm -hmm. solemnized within 90 days um, of the time that you receive your license. And this is Mary. As we were asked who's speaking. It's Mary Bonato. I'm an attorney at Gay and Lesbian Advocates and Defenders, uh, where we have been managing happily managing uh, marriages in, in multiple states in the New England region. Um, so you must do so within 90 days. Who does it? In Maine, it's all notaries. There are 29,000 notaries in the state, so without a doubt you will find notaries who perform weddings and are happy to do so. Uh, clergy, if they are willing, and also a judge or a justice may solemnize a wedding. So those are some of the basics. I'd like to turn it over now to Betsy Smith of Equality Maine to give an update on the 29th. Great, thank you, Mary. Well, first of all, congratulations, everyone. For years, we dreamed of the day that same-sex couples could marry in Maine, and now that that time is here, given what we went through to get here, it's hard to believe it's not just a dream. But I am reassured every day that we did indeed win a ballot measure campaign on November 6th. And on December 29th, same-sex couples in Maine can legally be married. So my piece of this webinar is to provide information about where you can get a marriage license on December 29th and also where you can find some wedding resources for getting married on the 29th or in the future. So several town offices have agreed to open specifically for this purpose on Saturday, December 29th. The number keeps growing, so the list I provide today probably will be outdated tomorrow. And some town halls, some town offices have regular Saturday hours, but may not issue marriage licenses on Saturdays. So to this end, if you are planning on getting a marriage license on Saturday, December 29th, or Monday, December 31st, you should call your local town office directly. Call and find out four things. If they're going to be open that day, when they're going to be open that day, if they'll be issuing marriage licenses, and whether you need an appointment. Some towns like Brunswick are requiring appointments and others are not. So we're going to put up a slide and the first link on the slide will enable you to find all the phone numbers to all the town offices in Maine. So if you go to this site and search by town, not county, you'll find the phone number right in the middle of the slide. So again, let me just say that no matter where you live in Maine, if you plan to get a marriage license on December 29th or the 31st, mm -hmm. call your local town office directly to find out if they're going to be open and whether you need an appointment. And you can find the number by going to the first link on the slide that you see, www.maine.gov slash local and search by town. So to date, the towns that we know are going to be open on Saturday, December 29th, specifically to issue marriage licenses include from south to north, Portland, Falmouth, Brunswick, Gardner, Hollowell, Augusta, Bangor, and Brewer. Now the times vary. Some are opening at midnight, some at 6 a.m., some at 9 a.m. So if you live in one of these towns, please call the town office directly and find out. Now this list does not include uh, the towns that have regular Saturday hours. If you plan to actually get married that day at your town office while getting a marriage license, then you should make arrangements ahead of time for that with the town officials. So the town may or may not provide notary publics or other officials to perform your wedding. You may want to or you may have to bring your own officiant. I believe Portland is providing volunteer notaries public, but other towns are not. So again, if you're planning to get married that day, please call your town office and make arrangements ahead of time so that everything goes really smoothly on your very special wedding day. You can find the number to all the town offices through that first link on the slide that you see. In terms of finding a notary public or other official who is excited about performing same-sex weddings and other wedding resources, you can go to the second link on the slide. That's Equality Maine's website. 
equalitymain.org. Just click the huge button on the front page that mentions marriage, and you'll find several links for everything you need to plan your wedding. The first link under marriage resources, and I believe it's gaymary.me, M-E, will lead you to officials across the state who are really happy to perform your wedding. And finally, last but not least, we're gathering wedding stories as part of a, a celebration tour next year. So please share your wedding plans and stories with us so we can document this historic moment in our lives. There's a link to share your story on that same page on the Equality Main website. Thank you, and again, congratulations to everyone. And now I'm going to hand it over to David Farmer. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, and, and congratulations. Um, it has been, uh, as, as Betsy and Mary have said, a, a long time in coming. Uh, and while today we are discussing uh, a lot of the technical steps and legal steps that we have to take, I, I just want to uh, congratulate you all and remind everyone that what we're talking about is a time of joy and celebration and something that we should be very happy about. So while it may seem, uh, it seem like a lot to comprehend about the paperwork and the documentation, uh, ultimately the goal here is to enter into uh, something that's, that's joyous. And uh, in that frame, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, religious freedom and the religious exemption that was included in question one that is now law of the land. Uh, and I'm going to just read the language from the statute itself and then uh, give a little bit of an overview about that. Uh, the chap this chapter does not require any member of the clergy to perform or any church, religious denomination, or other religious institution to host any marriage in violation of the religious beliefs of that member of the clergy, church, religious denomination, or other religious institution. The refusal to perform or host a marriage under this subsection cannot be the basis for a lawsuit or liability and does not affect the tax-exempt status of the church, religious denomination, or other religious institution. Uh, the reason that this is important is that uh, the, the folks who put together the, the ballot question and the initiative feel very strongly that uh, it is up uh, to each church and each denomination to make their own decisions about the types of ceremonies that they bless in their church, in their faith. Uh, but that is very different than what it means to be recognized by the state in a civil marriage. So if you are interested in having a religious service performed, it's important to, to talk to uh, the pastor or the leadership of that faith community and understand uh, what their position is on uh, solemnizing same-sex marriages. In addition, uh, you have the same responsibility to check ahead for facilities that may be religiously affiliated. Uh, this, this exemption in the law does create a strong exemption that allows a church uh, that may otherwise offer its banquet hall or its sanctuary for events to say no. Uh, so the best, the best method would be to, to talk about that uh, with your church and see uh, where they stand. Uh, finally, I'll just mention a question that we've gotten a lot of, uh, and that concerns uh, notary publics and other people who can solemnize marriages. And in Maine, uh, that group of people also includes lawyers. Uh, every lawyer uh, can function as a, as a notary. Uh, so the, the, there's a broad swath of folks who can do that. There have been a lot of questions raised, and many of those uh, brought up by opponents of same-sex marriage, about whether notaries are required to perform a ceremony. Uh, a notary who does not perform marriages does not have to perform marriages. However, if a notary does perform marriage, a marriage, that person cannot discriminate uh, based on uh, race, sexual orientation, religion, or any of the other factors. They are acting as an agent of the state. Uh, I, I answer that question because we hear it a lot, but in reality, uh, this is a, a, a question of, of a conflict that I think is um, perhaps not realistic in, in the real world, because I know for me, uh, when I got married, I wanted the person uh, that I knew to perform that ceremony, someone I trusted, someone who was 
part of my, my circle of friends, and uh, the notion of, a, of asking a stranger and trying to force a stranger into doing something they didn't want to do seems, seems strange. Uh, but there will be folks uh, who, there may be folks, I should say, who are looking for a conflict on this. And I guess what I would say is I just remind you uh, that this is a, a point in your life that is about your happiness and your joy, and that there are plenty of people, myself included, who would be happy uh, to help you uh, make this lifelong commitment, and that if you can, uh, uh, if you can find a way to, to uh, avoid those conflicts, it would, be, it would be in your best interest and everyone's best interest. Mary? Hi, everyone. It's Mary Bonato again, and I understand that you're have, some people are having trouble hearing us, so let us know if you can't. Keep texting. Um, I'm going to now segue out of the logistics of how to marry, calling ahead, and so on, into some of the legal issues. And what we're going to do now is answer some questions that we've already received you know, around taxes, around Social Security, around other states, and so on, and, and then open it up to all of you. So I just want to remind everyone that if you go to glad.org, there's already a publication up there called Marriage, the Basics. That explains a lot of the information we've discussed today, and in addition, we will be putting up other documents uh, about these detailed issues around taxes and the rights and protections of marriage and so on so that people can make an informed decision. So check the website to stay up to date. So first of all, in terms of a legal framework, some people want to know, well, I have a domestic partnership in Maine. Will marriage make any difference? And the answer to that is, yes, it will make a difference. Uh, the main registered domestic partnership law affects a few very important laws, some issues around inheritance and decision making. But marriage is not only legally broader, being married is itself a protection because everyone knows that means this one other person is the person who is your family. And you have an unquestioned right to be by that person's side. The social protection is as important as anything else. Now, in addition, and on the concrete side, as a general matter, marriage will increase people's access to family health insurance, to family care leave, meaning sick leave when your spouse is ill, automatic inheritance rights and protections on death, workers' compensation if a spouse is injured or killed on a job, and on and on. That's why I say stay tuned for us to put up some more information about the legal rights. But there are also responsibilities, and one of those core responsibilities is the duty to support the spouse. And of course, that's something that spouses normally want to do anyway, but it's also a legally enforceable right. Now, I need to mention one other detail, and that is that we live in a system right now where the United States government, the federal government, and all federal agencies do not respect, for federal purposes, a legal marriage of a same-sex couple. This is a result of a law passed in 1996 called the Defense of Marriage Act. And essentially, it provides a definition of marriage that treats married same-sex couples as though they are single, even though they are legally married in their states. Suffice it to say, <laughs> um, glad where I work and some others have challenged this law as unconstitutional and discriminatory, and the Supreme Court of the United States is taking up the issue in this very term, and we hope to know uh, by June, the end of June of this coming year, whether DOMA is off the books or not. Uh, these federal protections uh, 
number over 1,000, 1,138 to be precise. Um, you know, we have people, we have a situation essentially where people are committed in marriage, legally married by their states, but will not have the same protections for things like family medical leave for their spouses, veterans protections, social security survivor protections, um, and so on. So I also want to note that this is of a particular concern for binational couples, because normally if you have fallen in love with someone from another country uh, and marry, you are normally able to be together in the United States. And that is not true right now for binational couples. And we encourage you to consult with a experienced immigration practitioner if you are in that situation. So I want to turn now to some of the particular questions we've received. One is, well, if I get married, uh, if, I'm, if I get married on the 29th, or if my marriage is now recognized on the 29th that I entered into before, do I get retroactive benefits? And the answer to that is no. Your marriage is valid from, you know, for those of us who are already married from the 29th going forward, and for others as of the date of their marriage. Now, again, with respect to recognition of marriage, I want to be very clear that it's not just marriage from another state. The, the new law makes it very clear that a marriage of a same-sex couple that is validly licensed and certified in another jurisdiction, not another state, uh, but that includes states, is recognized for all purposes under the laws of this state. All right, so retroactive benefits, taxes. Now, here's the situation around taxes. This obviously started developing in Massachusetts um, when Massachusetts began marrying people in 2004. Because of this federal law known as DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, people will not be able to file their federal income taxes as the married people that they are. So for federal law purposes, you would continue to file your taxes as single or head of household as appropriate. Now, on the state level, uh, all the other states with marriage have worked out a way to ensure that married same-sex couples can file as the married people they are in the state. Um, we will, we assume that, we, well, we know that the Maine Revenue Service is looking at this issue now, and we hope to have guidance from them in short order about what position they will be taking on this issue. All right, we've received questions about children, and quite rightly, uh, because Marriage is enormous protection for children as well. And I want to mention a few aspects of that. Number one, when a child is born to a married couple, that child, uh, the, well, the spouses are both presumed to be the parents of that child. That is the law, and that will apply to same-sex couples as well. Now, I'm sure there are some people who will think that's great now I don't need to have an adoption and be in this strange situation where I'm adopting my own child. Not true. We strongly recommend that married same-sex couples continue to go through this process of jointly adopting their own children because an adoption is a legal judgment. Legal judgments must be respected in all 50 states including in those states that not only do not respect marriages of same-sex couples, but do not, for example, allow same-sex couples to adopt. So it is extremely important protection for your family to continue to do those adoptions. Another thing I want to mention about children, if you are thinking about adopting internationally or from another state, joining in a marriage may complicate your situation because not every state or foreign country will agree. Uh, although there are certainly plenty of children needing loving homes here in the state of Maine, so we could always refer you there. I also want to mention health insurance. Um, and this is one of the areas where we will follow up in a publication very soon. Marriage will get you more access to health insurance, but it will not guarantee you access to health insurance. So one particular tip is, if you are in a domestic partnership uh, and you are getting health insurance on your job for your partner slash spouse uh, because you are in a domestic partnership, 
or your employer has a domestic partnership program, please check with them in advance to make sure that when you marry, you will still have access to health insurance. So with that, um, I want to turn this over to Alice because, as I said, one of the responsibilities of marriage is support, and we end up in a situation where what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine, and that's, uh, those issues really come to a head in divorce. Alice? Thanks, Mary. My name is Alice, and while you might not initially think we're, we should be talking about divorce today, one of the benefits that comes with being married is also the benefit to be able to use the divorce process. And that's a process that is here in Maine through the state courts. And you would find out what court you would want to file for divorce in based on the town or area where you live. And you can either contact a local court in the area, try and check on the Maine's judicial branch website to figure out where that might be. So with divorce, I'm going to just try and cover a very, very few brief things because there are many parts to divorce and you should really, if you either need to file for divorce or you may in the future, you should reach out to a lawyer and try and talk to them. So there are rules in Maine about who can file for divorce. And generally speaking, if you're the one who wants to file, you need to be a resident of Maine. You need to either be a resident of Maine, meaning lived here for six months, and have been married here, or you're the one who's filing and you're a resident of Maine and you the grounds for divorce arose while you were here. The other piece also is that if your spouse is a resident of Maine, so say the person who's called the defendant, then that person, if they're a resident, you can file for divorce in Maine. So say you live out of state, but your spouse is still here, you want to get married somewhere to that loved one you have, but you need to end that relationship first, you can do that. Um, in Maine, there are several grounds that you can file for divorce or reasons why you tell the court. Maine does have the equivalent of what's considered to be a no-fault divorce, and that's called irreconcilable differences. And that's a very common reason for people to file. Just they're no longer going to get along. Their relationship is broken down. There are other reasons to file also, and you should talk with a lawyer about those if you're interested in that. Um, some general pieces that you should know about the divorce process is that it is one that deals with all of your assets and your debts and your property and your kids. So with what Mary was saying is that you become one legal entity as of the time of your marriage. So if you're marrying on the 29th or after as of the date of your marriage, if you're married in another state, that could be December 29th. If you, however, are either domestic partnered or civil unioned in another state or have had a commitment ceremony in the past, you might want to talk with a lawyer about what the length of your marriage might be for calculation of the timeline of your marriage in a divorce process. And that's something that would be a very specific conversation based on your own individual circumstances. Um, because I know that I would argue that it should be and would try to be the date that you were either originally in a commitment ceremony or domestic partnership or civil union. And that's something that we'll still yet find out as divorces proceed in Maine for same-sex couples. So just a couple of brief highlights. The divorce process, whenever you're talking about kids, you're talking about how you're going to make decisions about them whenever you're no longer together, parental rights and responsibilities. You're going to talk about the contact schedule you might have with them, holidays, visitation. That's not called custody in Maine. It's really the contact schedule might have, the visitation schedule, and you try and work on that. The court really encourages all people, whether or not there are children in a divorce, to try to come up with their own agreements and arrangements about how they're going to end their relationship. Because the court doesn't live in your life. They don't know what you're doing at home. They don't know what you have going on and what is best for you. And they have process through divorce called mediation or other alternative dispute resolution as ways to try and help parties or the spouses come up with their own arrangements about what they're going to do in their divorce, whether or not that's for your kids or your property. So brief follow-up on kids is also as part of that, you're going to be talking about some of the financial pieces related to children, which would be child support and also the tax exemption. So as being this new economic unit that is just a married couple with all of your assets and debts that are together from the date of your marriage going forward, there are some exceptions to that, say inheritance or gifts. 
that are considered to be non-marital property. And again, that's something that you'll work through as part of the divorce process. But when you're looking at your assets and your debt, the court does help you divide those. And the court uses the terminology an equitable division of your assets. That doesn't necessarily mean equal. It's equitable. And you try and talk about that and talk through it through your divorce. Some other issues that you could anticipate might be coming up will also be dealing with areas of spousal support and retirement benefits and what it is that you're each entitled to as you're ending your relationship through the divorce process. And again, I just want to remind people that if you are in a marriage in another state and you are looking to end that marriage, you will be able to begin to do that after December 29th if you are able to have either you or your spouse as a resident of Maine. One final note that I'd like to let everyone know is that if you're filing for divorce and you agree on everything, there is a 60-day waiting period from the date that you file before you could go into the courthouse and try and finalize your divorce. And every courthouse in Maine varies on how they schedule these, so you should check with the courthouse in your area. Thank you. And I think I'm going to turn it back over to Mary to field some questions that we are receiving. Hi again, everybody, and thank you for sending in your questions. We're going to move through as many of them as we can. Um, one of the first questions we received is <clears throat> was framed as, just as notaries have to marry uh, people, is the same true with vendors and venues? Um, so pardon me for being a lawyer and picking at the question. Uh, let's be clear about the notaries. Um, notaries, there are many of them here, and notaries uh, do not have to perform marriages. If they do perform marriages, then they need to provide them on a non-discriminatory basis. They couldn't refuse someone because of their race, because of their religion, because of their sexual orientation. And in the same vein, with respect to vendors and venues, I would say that when you are in the marketplace providing services and so on, um, again, uh, we have a law in the state that you cannot discriminate against um, members of the public because of their sex and their race and their sexual orientation and their religion and so on. So that is all true. Um, and I would say, just as a word of practical advice, there are many people in this state who are very excited about helping same-sex couples celebrate their marriages, and there will be plenty of vendors who are happy Happy to do so, so no reason to, to get into um, in conflict with people. The one other thing I would say about venues is, again, to reinforce David's point, that there is a specific exemption in the law now that says if, um, even if a church rents out its sanctuary uh, to the general public as a way of making money, um, it can, it can, it doesn't have to rent out to a same-sex couple for a marriage. It does not. And in the same vein, if a place of worship has a separate building or something or a gym that they rent out, uh, they don't have to rent it out to a same-sex couple to celebrate a wedding. This was one of the ways we were trying to respect religious freedom in this law, and we created some exemptions that are for religious institutions. Okay. Next question. Just totally changing topics here. Um, someone sent in a question about state tax treatment of employer-sponsored benefits to same-sex spouses of employees. So allow me just to back up for a second here. Under federal tax law, when an employer provides employee benefits uh, to the employee and the employee's spouse, like health insurance, it's not really considered compensation. It's a great benefit. It's not considered income, even though it obviously is a form of compensation. So it's not taxable, normally at the federal level. Uh, and it's not taxable if, if the person who gets insurance is your tax dependent. However, uh, because of the federal DOMA law, uh, this income, this, this benefit is taxable at the federal level. So if you get insurance uh, through your employer and 
what, what the employer has to do is figure out what is the fair market value of that insurance and add that to your W-2. And that, that's for federal tax purposes. The question was about state tax purposes, and the answer is we don't know yet. In the other states that have marriage, the way that it works is your W-2 will say one thing for your federal wages and another thing for your state wages. Your federal wages are higher because it includes the value of the health insurance, and your state wages are lower because uh, the state recognizes this as a benefit to a spouse and will not tax it. Okay, we have more questions? Okay. Will, medi will medical benefits be, okay, here's the same question. Will medical benefits be treated as imputed income for the spouse of a marriage at the federal level? Okay, here's another one. Next question. Could the Supreme Court of the United States end main marriages when they rule on DOMA or Proposition 8 this year? Thankfully, the answer to that is no. Um, uh, the Supreme Court, in, in deciding on DOMA, will decide whether or not it's permissible for the federal government to treat only one small group of married people as unmarried for all federal purposes. Uh, I have to say I'm optimistic on that one. And then with respect to Proposition 8, uh, California's constitutional ban on marriage, frankly, there are so many ways the court could go on that one um, about Proposition 8 itself that I am um, reluctant to say too much about it right now, although it's the kind of thing that we, we do have information about on the GLAD website. But no, the Supreme Court can't, um, it can't end marriage in Maine for any, any reason at this point. Do we have any other questions? Hi, everyone. This is David again. The question that we received is, is the new law at risk of being repealed? Uh, the, the simple answer is, is that it's not practical that it could be repealed in short order. Uh, the law that was passed by voters, 53% uh, to 47% on November 6th, becomes the law of the land uh, on December 29th. Uh, meaning that the the the, uh, the benefits and responsibilities that go along with marriage convey to, to same-sex couples who want to enter into that union. The process is such that uh, opponents of marriage could initiate a citizen's initiative, much like we did, but the soonest that that would take effect, uh, soonest that that could come to the ballot would be in 2014. It's also possible uh, that the legislature could introduce legislation at any point for consideration uh, of changes uh, to the statute, but that is also unlikely uh, given, given the, the, the control uh, of the State House and the State Senate uh, and its current leadership. So while any law can always be changed, uh, it is unlikely uh, to be something that would happen in the near term and it would have, I believe, a very small chance of success uh, before voters again uh, several years down the road. So while it's something surely that we uh, keep an eye on, uh, in a practical sense, it's very unlikely. And this is Betsy Smith. I just want to, uh, Betsy Smith from Equality Maine, I just want to add to what David said. If for some reason the opponents were successful at gathering signatures, which I think that is a tall order for them, and if they were successful at getting this on um, a ballot in 2014, a uh, couple of things. One, we're going to have a lot of happily married same-sex couples by then. Um, two, our support is going to be far above 53 percent because we will continue to work over the next two years to change, to continue changing hearts and minds. And three, we will, um, <clears throat> we will bring all of our political power to bear on this. So even in the unlikely chance that they could get to a ballot question, um, I uh, assure you we would bring all of our, um, our forces against them and they would not be successful. So the answer is, this law is not going to get repealed in Maine. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, it's Mary again. I have another round of questions here. Uh, there's a question about if I am married in Canada and have a registered domestic partnership in Maine, um, can I remarry? 
And the answer to that, I mean, I'm in that situation too. I have a marriage from Massachusetts and a registered domestic partnership here. And the answer is, no, your marriage from Canada is valid. As long as, it, you know, your marriage from Canada is valid here. And so, no, you um, do not need to remarry and your domestic partnership will be terminated. Again, jumping around, this is another tax question. So somebody asked, can I file my state tax form as married filing singly? And that is something where, again, we are going to need guidance from Maine Revenue Services that I expect is forthcoming. I'm not holding anything back here. I don't know what they're going to say. But I, again, I'd like to think that uh, in Maine, as in other states, they will figure out a way for couples to accurately represent their marital status on state forms, at which point you would decide whether you file as married filing jointly or married filing separately. Uh, next question, speak about how marriage affects the inheritance rights of the surviving spouse. Um, it's something where I don't know who wrote that question, but I'm happy to follow up with you offline. Um, I will just say a couple things about it. Uh, under state law, at least, you can't disinherit your spouse. Again, that's one of the responsibilities of marriage. Uh, unless you have a premarital agreement where you've both been separately represented and so on and, and have agreed to that. Also, under existing main law, uh, there are all kinds of allowances that are payable to the spouse to keep the household going as they work out issues around the estate. Those have not been available to domestic partners, and they will be available. And GLAD also has a document on probate protections uh, that was written in, in light of the domestic partnership law that explains a lot of the protections that exist under state law that are not available or were not available absent marriage for same-sex couples. Next question. Next question is, again, it's another political question, which is, let's say that um, NAM or some other organization were to proceed with an initiative to repeal this law, would it put the marriage law on hold? And the answer to that is no, it would not. The reason the marriage law was put on hold in 2009 is because the people's veto process is really part of the legislative process. And it was not until that process was concluded that we, the law would go into effect or not. This time, we did an <coughs> initiative, and that initiative is effective as of the 29th. And there's nothing that can undo that other than, you know, what David and Betsy have talked about, but we're, we're optimistic on that score. Okay. Okay, this is another tax question. <laughs> um, and the question is this, if we marry on December 29, do we file jointly for 2012 at the state level? And this question raises an important point, which is, if you marry in 2012, then there is a question about what is your filing status in April 2013 when you file your taxes. And if you are married, um, as long as you normally, if you marry before the end of the year, by, you know, by December 31st, you are considered married for that entire tax year. So if people want to avoid the confusion about this, as Maine Revenue Services gets us information, you could marry in, in January, and then you only have the 2013 tax year to worry about. But again, what this question also raises, do we file jointly for 2012? We cannot answer that question at this point because we are waiting for information from Maine Revenue Services about how to handle this. Okay. <clears throat> There's a question here uh, back to the basics about is there a delay between the time that you get your marriage license and being legally married? And the answer is that depends on you. Um, you can have your marriage solemnized the very same day you receive your license. When you go into your town clerk's office, it takes about 20 minutes to do the paperwork. And if you have arranged for uh, a notary or a willing clergy person or whoever to be available to solemnize your marriage, you can be married that very same day. The bottom line is you must marry 
within 90 days of receiving that paperwork. And once your marriage is solemnized, what happens is the person who solemnizes it signs off. There are two witnesses that must be present. You must have two witnesses with you, uh, and they, their names need to be recorded. And at that point, it goes back to the town, and you are married. Uh, it costs $40 to get married and $15 to get a copy of the certificate. So basically, you can be married as quickly as you want once marriage becomes available on the 29th. Okay, we have one more question here. Okay, as a notary, I am wondering if there's official wording that must be used when marrying a same-sex couple in Maine. Um, there is not, um, and frankly, there's not for anyone. And um, one of the things that we have heard a lot that just seems to make a lot of sense is I now, you know, well, I would say under the laws of the state of Maine, I now pronounce you legally married. I think, is that it for questions? All right. Well, I wish we could have seen you all, but we really appreciate your participating in this webinar. We will have follow-up information for all of you soon about some of these issues like taxation uh, and so on. And let's all have a terrific day on the 29th and thereafter. Thank you all very, very much. And thanks to our uh, Maine Women's Lobby, and thanks to Equality Maine, and thanks to our terrific panelists today. Alice Neal, David Farmer, and Betsy Smith from Equality, Maine. Thanks so much.